Another thing that's important is frog has rattles in it. Okay. When I used to use frogs that didn't have it, I always put rattles inside of it. And uh, the gentleman who was asking me that when you're fishing around lily pads, sometimes you're moving the frog across and you'll see the lily pads move. Okay. That's a good indication, obviously, there's fish there. And what you want to do is you want to be ready. Most of the time, unless the fish is really aggressive, it's not going to come through the lily pads. Okay. It's going to wait till that frog comes off the edge of the lily pads. Its nose is up there, and it'll wait till it comes off, and then I'll get it. The other thing you want to do is, and this is, I, I actually really enjoy doing this, because sometimes I'm just using the frog just as a search bait. I'm not necessarily worried about catching the, the fish on the frog, but I want to, if I can get a fish to react and move in that pad bed, then what I'll do is I throw a Texas rig worm into it, or a Texas rig two, and put it right in there, and I know there's a fish there, and he'll come over and eat it. So sometimes I'm just using it as something to, as a search bait to show me that there's a fish there. Then I'll, then I'll try to catch it. But uh, yeah, rattles are important. And like I said, you have to have patience. Any type of top water fishing, I don't care if you're using a popper, if you're using a, a spook, a sammy type bait, you know, if you react to the, to the boil, you'll probably miss more than 50% of the time. You'll miss that fish. You know, you have to wait for the week. Frog, frog fishing is so much fun, you know. If um, if I wasn't doing a tournament, I'd probably go find somewhere I can throw this all the time because it's it's very exciting. The other thing is I don't I don't think I have any here with me, but um, oh, here's something else to show you. If you buy a frog and it has legs like that. Cut them shorter, okay? Because with a frog like this, I can get it to walk the dog. I can get it to go side to side when I'm when I hit the water part. When you have long legs like that, it's too much drag. It won't walk. It only comes straight. So what you want to do is you want to get them and you want to cut them down to about the length I have these ones here, and that way the frog the frog can walk and do a little more action. And sometimes. You might want to try these just in open water, not necessarily over pads. I've got actually some very, very big smallmouth just throwing in open water with this. But you got to get that frog walking. You got to get the action going. Okay. Everybody know how to walk a frog? Do the walk the dog action with a frog? Yes. No. No. Yeah. Well, you have to. What you have to do is you have to give slack line when you're retrieving. You jerk, you have to have slack line so that frog can turn and then you jerk and it'll go that way and then slack line and it'll come back and then you pull this way and it'll go back and forth like that. Okay. Uh, 有时候看到拉这个青蛙在走，看到底下立的派在动，是证明有鱼在里面。所以戴维用它作为 如果是长的话阻力太大你要回拉的时候呢就是它一直走就没有什么 Another thing I'll tip I'll share with you too is I like to scent them up. I like to put scent on it. What it does is it makes the bait very slippery. So it slides over pads better. You know, because when it's when it when it doesn't have it, when you make it nice and oily, it slides over it better. And the other thing is Again, it's going to help if it has scent on it. When that fish grabs it, 
and it, it, it actually takes that scent, it'll hold on to it a little bit longer. It gives you a better chance to get that hook set into before it spins it out. So putting scent on your frog is very important. <laughs> 就让你晒得护个给你时间更久一点就是比较好一点就是有卖那种像棒啊就是很多牌子啊就是就是喷一下那种比较好一点要喷那气味印度神油对 I also use a very long, well, a longer rod than probably most people That's a, This is again, it's a 710, it's actually the same rod as, as I throw the Alabama rod but the uh, longer the rod, the more line you can pick up, so the better hook set you can get. Okay? The other thing you want to learn to do is don't set hook over your head like this. Okay? Set hook across your body like this. Okay? You move more line when you go across your body. Depending on the length of your rod, it could be up to two feet more by moving it across your body like this as opposed to here. Plus it puts you in a better position to fight the fish when you're here and you have it and then you can reel down. Whereas when you're up here, it's a very awkward place to try to fight a fish from. Okay. So almost uh, every kind of you can use the That's probably the best one overall is if you come across your body. The only other the only time is if you've got a true vertical presentation, that's the only time you might want to go off for jump shot. Yeah, drop shotting, or if you got a flipping jig right there, you might want to go up. But other than that, you know, pretty well every other presentation across your body is the best is the best hook set. Uh,这个刚刚说这个杆钓鱼的钓青蛙的杆要长一点，呃，它这个七尺十寸，seven 侧面赛呢就是幅度要大一点形成真的啊就是六鱼也比较好好六如果是他说你这样赛的话就没法六鱼了这样赛的话你可以稍微回一点六把鱼尤其在六鱼的时候那鱼 you know, fighting 的时候就是比较一点用swimming bait Something you should try. Um, yeah. Real good for all kinds of fish, not just for bass. I use this for pike fishing, I use this for walleye fishing. <laughs>